if you've tuned into my last episode, you will know that we began the journey of creating this one-of-a-kind grungy vintage junk journal. And we got as far as decorating the front cover you see here. So I named this cover Sisters and they are two artists. And today we're picking up right where we left off, completing the cover. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So if you missed the previous video where I walk you through creating this cover, you can find that linked below this video. And at the time of creating this, I had no idea how I was going to construct the cover, but I have had some thoughts about it in the meantime. So my plan is to use all the parts of the original cover, including the spine. But I want to make the spine of my journal a little wider than the spine I have here. So I'm going to adhere these two pieces of fabric. So let me show you the fabric that I have chosen. So for the outside fabric, I'm going to use this one, which is a Tim Holtz fabric called London Grid. I love this so, so much. So let me show you what that would look like. We'll only see the edges peeking out basically. So that will be my outside. I just love the dark contrast. And then on the inside, I wanted something maybe a little more unexpected because for me, this is a more modern looking fabric, which is this one. This is also Tim Holtz. And this one is called Fractured Mosaic. And I think this one will go really well with my papers. So these are from my kit called Lives Remembered. You can find this kit linked below. I also think the teal and the dark blue go really well with the colors of my cover. And in between, I'm going to add a layer of packaging. This is from one of those Amazon envelopes. You can also use like a paper grocery bag or some other packaging you might have or something like Tyvek, like from an express mail envelope. Although I don't think it's absolutely necessary to even put the layer in between, but I like the thought of having something a little more sturdy, especially here on the spine, rather than just two pieces of thin fabric. So let's take this off. And I'm actually going to start this off exactly like I would start off my planners. For example, like this one, my current planner is exactly the same thing, except I don't have these panels on the front. This concept has worked for me so well, so I will continue to use it because why change something that works? <laughs> And by the way, if you've never seen this one and you'd like to see how I constructed it, you can find that video down below as well. So I'm going to take my piece of packaging and add glue to that. And this time I'm going to try it with my Liquitex Matte Gel. Usually I would use a thinned down fabric glue or PVA glue, but this time I'm just going to try it with this one. This way I don't need to thin it down. I'm just going to cover my whole surface with the matte gel. I'm working quite quickly because it dries quite fast, but probably that depends on what area you live in. And I will be sewing around this as well. I have learned my lesson and I know it's better to glue it first. So basically I'm gluing this in between the two fabric layers and as you can see I cut my paper to be smaller than my fabric because obviously I don't want that showing. Make sure there's no wrinkles. Well, then I'll add glue to the other side of my packaging. 
You don't need to sew, you can just do the gluing part. The sewing is really more for decoration. If your fabric has a direction, make sure now that you are gluing it the right way. It really doesn't matter for mine. I'll just use my little vintage iron to flatten out any creases or bubbles. When I found this at my secondhand store, I never envisioned having so much fun with this and using it so much. I actually thought it was just going to be more like a paperweight or a decorative item, but it is so fun to use it to fold papers or to use it in this way. It was such a lucky find and it was actually made in Vienna. How cool. It's called Bugolet. Okay, so this is our inside, this is our outside. And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and stitch around probably a couple of times. But not with this pink thread that was in there. <laughs> Do you know those days where it takes you like 10 minutes to actually manage to get the thread into the needle of your sewing machine? Yep, I just had one of those days. <laughs> so I went around the edge with a black thread three times twice with a running stitch and then the third time going around alternating between a running stitch and a zigzag stitch. It's not super visible on this dark fabric but you can see it if you look closely. So now we just need to adhere our panels. I'll start off with the front. Maybe I'll add some tape to this wire. Just take a piece of masking tape. And this time I'm going to use my Amsterdam Heavy Gel Medium. This is glossy, which obviously won't matter in this case, as long as we don't see any of it squishing outside of the cover. Alternatively, you could probably just as well use your matte gel medium or a bookbinder's glue or any strong glue, even normal PVA glue would probably work. I just want to use this because I don't use it a lot because it's glossy and I didn't see that when I bought it. So this seems like a good opportunity to use it because I think it will hold really well. So I'm putting a generous coat on my cover. I just love that there are so many ways to make junk journal covers and it's so fun to try different versions. Actually, I would love to hear what is your favorite way of binding your junk journals or of making covers in general. I'll do the back cover next. Here I obviously want to make sure that these line up. Maybe it would be smart to have like a ruler. And lastly, let's do the spine. Okay, so this obviously needs to dry. But I just want to see the shape the size so we have this it will be like this that's the spine and that's the back i'm wondering if i should just crease it just a little bit right so that we get an edge rather than a curve here on the spine yep i think that is better Okay, this now definitely needs to dry and I just see that this is not really in the middle, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. This looks like it's going to be a nice and sturdy cover. It's obviously always good to think about your closure if you want to have one. I considered adding a ribbon as a closure in between my layers here. So I would have had to add that in between my layers. Obviously, I still could add a ribbon just by gluing it on the inside here. But of course, it looks nicer if it's tucked away in between the layers. 
Obviously, you can always just wrap around something at the end. There's two reasons why I don't really like that for this kind of cover. First of all, when I have an image with faces on the front, I don't like wrapping anything right over their faces. And second of all, when I have fabric peeking out like this, when I then wrap something, I'm going to indent this part right here, which I don't really like as well. So my plan for this one was not to have a closure. So I'm hoping it will just lay nice and flat like this when it's done. But when I do find it needs a closure, I'm thinking I could maybe add something that would clip on the front and the back, maybe like a chain or something in between. And since this is kind of like an art themed journal, we have our two artist sisters here and we have the paintbrush and we have splatters here. I feel like we need splatters on the inside as well. So again, I'm going to use my Van Gogh deep gold watercolor, which comes in a tube. Kind of hard to see on this pattern actually. Whoops, that's okay. That's actually good. That looks like a real nice paint mop. I bet I can't do that on purpose because I have to touch it. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I like those. That looks very artsy. <laughs> Maybe we can do another one here. Enough, Barbara. <laughs> Actually, this is the first time I see it has some script inside here. How cool does that look? Love this part right there. I can also enlarge some of these paint splatters by pressing on them. See, that kind of makes them bigger. And it dries them quicker, so two in one. Oh, I think they look really fun. So this whole cover needs to dry thoroughly before I continue adding any signatures or anything else. This also gives me time to think about how I'm going to add my signatures or what they're going to look like because until now I have no idea. This gives you an idea of how I like working in little steps because now I have my complete cover. This again gives me new inspiration. It looks totally different from what I started off with at the beginning of the video. And this will inspire me to craft my signatures. So I hope you'll join me for that. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.